Hey guys, it's Awesome Railfan, and uh, today I'm going to be doing a video on how to build your own map on Train Simulator. I have uh, Train Simulator 2016. I'm not sure whatever one you have, but I've had the game since 2014 version, and um, it's worked very well. So it's pretty much the same now, so it should help for all the times. So right from the main menu, you go to build, and then these are all your routes. They will be mostly ones that you already have and you don't really want to edit them because you can mess them up. You can select one and click clone and that will clone that map. Um, just do a clone so then you can mess with the clone and you're not messing with the actual original version. Um, and then when you want to make a new route you click here new route and you select um, a texture setting that you want so like I'm just gonna do Donner Pass I'm gonna name it demo because I already have the one demo and then I click it and then you click edit and then you have to wait for the loading process shouldn't take too long because it's a new um, map with nothing on it okay so now you can see the ground is textured for Donner Pass and all of this is all the Donner Pass track which is in the track thing and then this is buildings and then this is brush textures and uh, landscape so I'll start off with the brush and landscape so this first tool here um, what you do is you can select it and then you go down to this bottom menu and this right here, this number that says 50, zero, zero, that's the, the size of area that you're editing. So I'll leave it at 50 and I'll show you. So this one, you just grab an area and you can lift it up or put it down or move it around, making it into like a scene. And then this one, it just raises it up. And then of course the other one, it puts it down. So that's just for changing the uh, mountains and stuff. Then this one is for this one levels out the ground to, um, so like I'll show you if you mess it all up like that, then this one levels it out uh, flat, back to what you had before. And then this one is makes it completely level to what uh, the ground height is, like the proper height that's set. And then this one is just messes up the scene goes up and down for building like a hilly rough terrain and then this one here I'll get into it a little later the one with the magnet it um, snaps the landscape attached to the track so we'll get to that once we get to track work and then of course this one here is a brush which is obviously for painting the ground just like that that's for uh, I'll get into more detail of these once I get the track done. And then this one here, you can see where it says Scenario Tools. If you click this, it goes into a new thing and it has to reload it. And that's for adding in your trains and train cars and everything into your scene. So we'll start off with track work. But before we do that, I'm going to show you a key tool that I've learned. So. If you could see here, there's a big square and then there's a small square with the arrow. You click the small square and then on the other side, this little bar will come up, you see, and then you put your mouse over it and it'll pop out. And this is all of your add-ons and they have weird names and stuff. So you have to click it and then you check it off. If that would work. There we go. So you check them off for all of your maps and add-ons. And this is adding all of the um, content of those maps. So like the type of track, the type of buildings that the map has. These are all my add-ons and stuff. If you want, if there's like no engines in your uh, locomotive adding spot, which is a scenario thing, then you have to go here and you have to check off all of these. And that will give you that, which I know you can... You might get into the editor and realize, hey, there's nothing, there's not much for me to work with, but 
It's just because you haven't had all these checked off yet. So that should be good. Now we can go over here and we're going to do track. So you want to click this track all and then you're going to pick the kind of track you want. Now I know they're all codes and stuff and the only way to find out what they are is by clicking them and adding in a piece. So it'll bring up with a here, I'll start with the simple Donner Pass main track 3D. So then it'll come up with this little yellow arrow. And you can find your spot where you want to put the track. You just click once, and then now the arrow's gone. Now you move your mouse down to where you want the track spot to finish, like that. And then you just click again. And it'll follow through all the way to the end so you can add even more and you can click again and then you can do a curve and you can do it again and you can just keep adding till you have the section of track that you want and then another thing if you want more than one track you go to that same menu as the uh, ground tool and you go into here and this is tracks so you can type two or th i think it goes up to 32 tracks you can add so then we can add in like a little siding spot here and then you can go back to one track click that go there and now here's the part that I, when I started doing maps I struggled with a lot is switches they can be really finicky and annoying if you try and add a lot of switches like build a, building a yard um, but here's just a simple way that took me a bit to figure out. So here, if you want to add a switch in here, you want this siding to go back onto the main track. So you click, I'll show you another thing that you're going to need. So you move the yellow thing until it magnets right onto the end of the other track. So you just, you move it near and then suddenly it goes right onto it. So then now you click and you drag out and you can stop just near the other track not if you go too far in then it won't be able to curve back out to be on the other track so you just go like this far click and then you can go further out like that and then once it shows this orange line along the main track or the track you're adding it to you can click and it'll finish your switch and it will give you your switch stand there and now you have your switch in so you can go to the other side that you have you can do that make sure it has those orange things and you always want to check your switches because sometimes if you're doing a lot of work you can realize that your switch doesn't come up with a switch stand and this triangle piece here if it comes up with a big uh, square line like this on your track that means the track is an, an, is an end and it won't work once you go into map mode, your train will just derail. So there's that piece and then we can add in a track like this. So then if you want to add a switch to an existing track, you go to the spot where you want the switch to start, you click and then you drag out. But you see how tight this corner is? That's because it's set on main line, which is over here in this menu. So this menu over here is another one that you're going to want to deal with when building tracks. So this is your track speeds. The top speed is for passenger. The bottom is for freight. So you can change that. So since this is going to be a siding yard track, change it to 15. And then here you want to click yard. Now the yard will allow tighter curves than main line. So as you can see now it's a tight curve spot. So now what you do is you click where you want the switch, you drag out like this. You can continue your uh, extra track that you want, just like that. And then there you go. You have your uh, new addition piece. Okay, now, um, for adding different types of track, 
some tracks are different heights so they don't fit together well but if you stick with the same uh the track from the same pack they will work most of the time such as the donner pass you have the main line tunnel yard track they will all work together on your thing so but you can use other tracks that you want but see like if, if i use this one from the other map it doesn't connect but it does make it look like an abandoned track if you're using this track type from the uh, portland terminal map which is nice you can add in like an old abandoned uh, detail to your map like that okay so now we're going to move on to buildings so you click the house icon on the top one and then now you have all these little menu things that you can see so this one is people animals vehicles and it has all of that stuff so some of them in here they'll say a, a n i m that means animated so this one is an animated one which means it moves once you go into gameplay mode which is uh pretty cool so we'll just add that there and then for people starting with the newest one the train simulator 15 or whatever it is you see how this thing is for moving things such as like these arrows to move it up and down and all around and stuff they're really annoying so what I do is you go down to the bottom menu here and they'll say TS 14 click that and it gives you the nice the older version I guess of it so it has the center ball now the center ball if you want to move the object crazy sideways upside down like that you use the center uh, ball thing if you want the object to go up and then if you want it to go this way or this way with the longitude and latitude of the map and then you go to the blue one the ring of the blue and that's to rotate it okay so and then what we've got here this one is stations so it's all the station parts like even small stuff like canopies and stuff and then we have all your foliage such as your bushes and water and all that fun stuff so we can just add in some bushes and trees and what else it really takes a while to like look through the whole thing when you're just starting and learn all the different stuff that you like you can click this one this title view and it'll actually show you the object that you're uh, adding but it sometimes is really slow and annoying so uh, I tend to not use it but um, yeah you can just add in all these bushes and trees and such into the map wherever you would like it's all about how you want things just like that okay so now we'll move on to the next one which is commercial and industry buildings these are where it's fun for the model railroading not model this is where it's fun for the industry uh, buildings because you get to add them into your layout for uh, switching and stuff so what we got here is all of these different buildings you can click on them and check them all out and uh, find the ones you want so I'm gonna go add something from the Portland terminal map something not too big this oh, yeah. add that there we'll move this over so that works there and then you can just add all the buildings you want it's 
throughout this thing. You can add big factories and just everything. There's a, a lot to the maps once you get to know them. To know all the different things you want. Um, let's see if I can find it. So another little shortcut tip that I'll give you when you're adding in a building. So like I'll click I want factory A or B. So I'll just go over here and show you. So before you put it down, you click you click down to put the building down on the uh, left button but you hold it when you push it down and then you move the mouse in the direction you want the building to go such as you want it facing this way and then you let go and then that places it in its spot and if you're ever in the building mode and you're you have a thing stuck to your mouse you right click and it goes away another helpful tip so we'll just add in some background industrial group buildings here to fill this uh, background scene. It's normally what I do, it just helps. Uh, when you're building a big map, it gets annoying adding in every single background building and stuff. So you can just use the big, big uh, old detail. Just get rid of that. Okay, so now we've got our buildings and such placed. And uh, I will show you the track thing, actually. People are going to want to know this one. So, you go back to the other tool, the uh, mountain and uh, terrain tool. And then you can go crazy and add it right over the track and all that. Like this. Building a whole mountain hill spot. And then you click that tool that I was talking about, snap tool, and you move over your track. And it will move all of the land that is on your track or near your track or under it, like this. So if you make a giant hole underneath your track, and you just slide it over top and it fills all of that in so your track has ground underneath it. But it doesn't affect stuff that's far away from the track, like these mountain these hills spots there so that's a nice tool to be uh, to use okay so now we have our uh, tracks added in what we're going to do now is add our train cars so you go here you click the scenario tools and it says you want to save your route click yes of course and yes again And then it's going to go into the loading menu and load up all the uh, stuff for that. So now we have it up and you can move out and turn around here. And then you click locomotives. So you have engineers, or engines, sorry, uh, cars. This is full train sets like full consists and then this is the other scenario stuff so what we're gonna do is add a locomotive in here we'll go find a, see, a Guilford unit just like that and then you go in so now once you have your engines if you try and go into play gameplay mode and it it won't um, the engines won't work you won't be able to drive them what you have to do is you go into the top menu here and then there's this guy with like a conductor hat and it says driver you have to click that and then move over and wait till it highlights the locomotive you want to be driving and click and then it'll come up with this and now that one engine is drivable you can only do one engine for a consist to be drivable which is can be annoying because if you want to switch directions and st so forth so now we're going to add in a train car so you go to the train car one 
and then you scroll down your huge menu of stuff that you have and we're gonna add a boxcar in for this industry track so you go find a boxcar in here in this big list there we go 50 foot CP so you can drop that and then do that and I'll show you another cool thing if you want to add a ton of cars you can put you can just keep clicking and it adds a bunch or what you can do is you can add a bunch like this press shift then click and they'll all go red and then do control C control V and then there you go you've added a more and then you can keep doing that till you have a full train or if it's already in a consist that you've built yourself or is already in the game as a consist you go into here and you find it in this big list of combination stuff and then you click it and then it'll go to your map now this trains too big for the map that I have because it's very small I'll try and find something for you so here's something light engine so then that's a full consist that's already uh, in there like this as you can see so we'll add or two to this train just a simple way to add stuff like that and uh, yeah it's not too difficult for adding train cars and stuff once you've figured it out and uh, then you can go in here and you can click your uh, play button which is drive and you want to save it and it'll do another loading page and then there you go there's your map so there's that thing I added in it moves around like that and here's our train so you click the train now you're in drive mode your map works perfect uh so thank you for watching i hope you uh enjoyed this and i hope it was really helpful for somebody out there um i've been getting a few requests for it so i hope those people can watch this and see just how to do one themselves uh, and uh, thank you for watching.